Development is around us. We wake up in the morning, facing the frenzy and dynamic numbers of growth, stocks, assistance that contribute to the economy of a country. Every stakeholders, states, interest groups and individuals are doing their best to sustain their stability and to make the economy ascending high. No wonder what we do every day may affect the world's economy, including us as a human being. We try to fulfill our basic needs. The state crop commodities is the mainstay of national income and Indonesia's foreign exchanges. The contribution of a state crops subsector to the national economy tends to increase from year to year and expected to strengthen overall national development. Furthermore, to spread the state crops information widely. And here we are, trying to fulfill our lifestyle by walking into a coffee shop, sitting in a dark cold room of a typical 2010s cafe in a downtown area, definitely soothing inner soul by the aroma of caffeine roaming throughout the room. When I sip a cup of coffee, there are two things crossing my mind. First, how many hands have been involved in my cup of coffee today? And second, how does this little bean of happiness consign the development in the largest country in Southeast Asia? And the journey begins. Coffee Arabica, one of the distinctive species originally indigenous to the highland jungle in Ethiopia. At first, Indonesia was one of the greatest and the finest exporter in the world. The coffee you enjoy each day has taken a long journey to arrive in your cup, until in the 1880s all Arabian beans were devastated by pests. At the golden age of coffee, Java was known in every American exhibition. Between the time they're being planted, picked and purchased, coffee beans go through a typical series of steps to bring out their best. Coffee spends an average of nine months growing under the sun, and generally speaking, more than 300,000 farmers are involved. Coffee has traveled thousands of miles to your cup, locally and internationally. Your cup of coffee is at stake. Arabica coffee, which makes up 64% of the world's coffee supply, is a little finicky. Here's why. Most coffee grow only between the tropics of Cancer and Capricorn, often referred to as the coffee belt. Within this region, Arabica coffee needs specific conditions to thrive. The trees grow best between 3,000 and 6,000 feet, where hot days and cool nights slow down the development of coffee cherries and create a more refined flavor.
but that's just for the world. If you look into the smaller scope, then we have to specify on the target. And there comes Bandung. People call it Paris Punjab for its magnificent beauty, cityscape, and as a perfect getaway. Indonesia is known for the second largest coffee bean exporter in Southeast Asia. It is shown that in the United States alone, Indonesia exported more than 70,000 tons of coffee beans. We have our way to be number four in exporting coffee beans and the United States becoming number one on export target in 2016. Speaking of production, Indonesia, which produces roughly between 650,000 to 750,000 tons of coffee beans a year. Just like a competition, Indonesia is racing behind Brazil, Vietnam and Colombia in coffee producing. A data from Statistik Perkebunan Indonesia Komoditas Kopi in 2016 shows them. In West Java alone, it produced 16,500 tons out of 2 hectares of coffee plantation. Located in Bandung Regency, there is a 10,035 hectares total area of coffee plantation and a total of 9,480 hectares. It involved 160 farmers working in the field. Besides tea, West Java is also known for its coffee plantation. It all started when a group of farmers in Pangalengan named Kelompok Tani Rahayu, who specializes in horticulture cultivation, which was established in 1992. And nine years after that, they innovated and committed to make only one commodity, and unfortunately, the farm was shrinked to only seven people because they wouldn't see the potential benefits in planting them. With all the ups and downs, the group of farmers eventually grew. In 2009, LMD Rahayutani has obtained the Forest Management Allowance, or Hakkolola Hutandesa, issued by the local government of Southern Bandung. So they maximally functioned the land of 60 hectares filled with those beans of joy. Time after time, the growing number of their production is escalating in line with the farmers. In that year, alongside with local disasters like the earthquake and natural fire, the group held a social project with their intention to increase motivations to the natural disaster victims, which are coffee farmers. Furthermore, in order to approach the community to explore the potential that exists, they implement the program of empowering the community of coffee farmers through the activities of livestock care, which is the first step in an effort to help restore the economy of the peasant coffee community. This coffee plantation has got numerous achievements from governments locally and nationally. And in 2010, the group decided to establish a company called PT Nugara Mitra or Kopi Malabar Indonesia. And they broadened their business in several sectors, such as developing new for coffee plantation use, including revitalization of used or arable land, planting new coffee fields and seeding new beans into the fields. Second, developing the Lua coffee, which involves the cultivation of the Lua, their treatments and their means to provide them with care. And last, is actually they conduct a partnership with local forestry management in expanding their lands into 238.5 hectares. In 2011, they became bigger. They improved their quality of beans, certified internationally, putting standards, developing facilities and infrastructures 
such as company vehicles, new warehouses, and water tobacco. And not forgetting to mention that Malabar also cares about the environment. That's why they have this program to empower society in sustainable development. One village, one product, or the OVOP, and their own specialized coffee village. In 2012, they entered a new level, which they created for Prasimitra Malaba to enhance quality of coffee and the farmers too, in training and brewing. And Malaba also achieved some milestones recognized by West Java province, and they happily expanded their lands from 257.5 to 596 hectares by the end of the year. And now, Malambar is no longer strange to people who live nearby, since the majority of them relies on this heavenly coffee plantation, in jobs and their incomes. As the corporation grows larger, local society would rely on such opportunity to continue their lives in the field. This actually contributed, indirectly told us, that the local development is real, felt deeply into the hearts of the farmers. As the local wisdom is all, they live by coffee, eat by coffee, sleep by coffee, and die of coffee.